Hello and welcome everyone to Contemporary Math. This is 3.2. We're talking about truth tables today and we're going to be looking at them in terms of the negation, conjunction, and disjunction. So a truth table is a device used to determine when a compound statement is true or false. So what we're talking about today is statements that include only a single statement we're just going to call that P. We're going to look at compound cases. Okay, so we have two statements, P and Q. And then cases with three statements, so P, Q, and R. So we're going to take our statements uh, from what we were doing in section 3.1 with the P's, Q's, and R's, and now write out the possible truth values for all these statements. So in logic, a single statement can either be true or it can be false. Those are our two possible cases with a single statement. As soon as you add another statement, so P and Q, we now get four different cases. So they both can be true, as seen here, or they both can be false, as seen right here. Now it's also possible that statement P could be true while Q is false, or switch that around. P can be false while statement Q can be true. And we have all of the possible cases right there. Now, the possible cases is always going to be 2 to the nth power. Okay, so here we have 1 statement p, so this is 2 to the first power, which is 2. If we have two cases, we're going to get 2 to the second power, which is 4. And so here with three statements, it's going to be 2 to the third power, which is 8 possibilities. So let's go ahead and write out all the 8 different ways that we can get trues and falses with three statements. So we can get all three to be true. Then we can have P be true, Q be true, and then what would make it different is if R is false. Next, we could have P be true, Q then could become false, and R can be true. Then we could have P be true, and then both Q and R be false. Now these are all the ways where P is true and then Q and R are right here. So next we would have P being false, Q and R both being true. So you can kind of see the pattern that we're following here. Then P is false, Q would be true, and R would be false. Q, uh, P would be false again. And then to make this different, Q would be false, and R would be true. And then our final case here, we would have all three falses. So let's just kind of go through and analyze. A quick way we could write all these cases, rather than thinking about them from left to right, would be thinking about them vertically. Okay. So here in P, we just have true then false. In two cases, we would do two trues and then two falses, and then Q would alternate true, false, true, false. With three statements, we'd go ahead and do it in four trues, and then four falses, and then Q would alternate two trues, two falses, two trues, two falses, and then R would alternate every time, true, false, true, false, true, false, true, false. Okay, so the first step in determining a truth table is to determine the different cases that you might have for the statements. All right, next, we're going to talk about how these simple uh, items function in a truth table. So we have a negation, a conjunction, and a disjunction. So the negation, the truth value is switched. So for negation to happen, you only need to have one statement. So like we have P and then you have negation P. So the negation applies to just the one statement. 
So in case 1, remember p could be true or it could be false. So there's our p there. Now the negation switches the truth value. So when p is true, negation p has to be false. And when p is false, negation p has to be true. So anytime you see this little squiggly, which means negation, you just switch the truth value of whatever you're looking at. Now for a conjunction, this is p and q. It is true only when p and q are both true. So let's go ahead and write in our cases here. So remember, p went true, true, false, false. q alternates, true, false, true, false. And this column is asking us to find p and q. So let's go up here again. p and q is true only when both p and q are true. So looking at this case, are p and q both true? Yes. So therefore, we put a true. Are p and q both true in case number two? Well, no. So we're going to put false. Are p and q both true in case three? No. So we put false. Are p and q both true in the fourth case? No. So we put false. So here is the truth values for any conjunction p and q. So you might want to just write down the question you ask yourself. Are both p and q true? Okay. If yes, then it's a true statement. Let's move on to disjunction. Now this is P or Q is true if P, Q, or both are true. Okay, So P could be true, or Q could be true, or both could be true. So let's fill out our cases for two statements. So true, true, false, false, under P and then alternate true and false under Q. Okay. Now, another way to think of this, if, if there is a presence of true in our case, then the statement P or Q is going to be true. Okay. So is there a presence of true in this first case? Well, yes, there is. So both are true, and we get a true statement. In case number two, is there a presence of true? Well, P is true, so P or Q is going to be true. In case number three, is there a presence of true? Well, yes, Q is true, so therefore P or Q is going to be true. And in case four, is there a presence of true? No, neither of them are true, so this is a false statement. So the question we can ask ourselves here is, is there a presence of true? If yes, then we get a true result for our truth table. OK, so these are the basic ones here. You need to have these memorized and learn how to ask yourself these questions when you see this symbol or this symbol. Now I just want to talk about these just a little bit in terms of what we were doing with set theory. So negation P is very similar to what we were doing with the complement in set theory. Okay. So remember A prime was anything that was not in A. So this is really the same thing that we're showing here. For P and Q, this was the same thing as saying the intersection of A and B. So if we're looking at the Venn diagram, for this to be true, it has to be in both of the circles. Not just one true or the other true, but both have to be true. 
For our disjunction, this is just like our union in set theory. So looking at this right here, it can be here, or it could have both, or it could be here. So the presence of true is going to make this true, and so the union and the or in logic end up being the same. Okay, So hopefully that helps kind of put this in perspective a little bit more. So let's go ahead and try and actually complete some truth tables now. So for number one, it says complete the following truth tables and then box the final answer column. So we would read this as P and not Q. So in looking at this, we have our two statements, P and Q. And so our cases are going to be with P and Q only. We only need two of them. So the first step is always to identify how many cases you have and to fill those in. Now the next step is to actually complete the truth table. So what you want to do is start with any plain statements. So this is just the letter P. And we would just look over here to determine what that column should be. So P is true, true, false, false. Okay, those are all the single statements. Next, you would look for any of the negations. So we're going to do this negation Q next. So remember, negation switches the truth sign. And so we're going to look at this column Q, and then we're going to just switch it to put not Q. So here, this was true. We're going to switch this to false. Here, Q is false, so not Q is true. Here, Q is true. And not Q then would be false. And here Q is false, so not Q would be true. Now in thinking about this, remember Q was alternating true, false, true, false. So not Q is going to be the opposite. It's going to alternate false, true, false, true. Now we go ahead and evaluate where the two come together with the conjunction. Now what was the question we asked ourselves with conjunction? Are both true? If yes, then this is true. So here, P and not Q. True and false. That is a false because both are not true. How about this one? P is true, not Q is true. Are both true? Well, yes. So this was a true statement. Are both true in case number three? No, so it's false. And are both true in case number four? No, so it's false. Now in a truth table, your answer is the last box that you filled in. So your answer is right here, false, true, false, false. Now the whole point of this is if we can evaluate what P and Q actually are, so if we're given statements for P and Q, and we can evaluate their truth values, we can determine whether this statement is also true. So let's try that. We'll just let P be uh, Mr. Potoff is a teacher. And we can let statement Q be Mr. P teaches art. Okay, so judging from this, we could rewrite P and not Q as Mr. P is a teacher and Let's see, not Q doesn't teach art. OK, 
Okay, so we're going to evaluate the truth value of this entire compound statement by looking at the truth values of P and Q only. So let's evaluate P. Mr. P is a teacher. Well, that is a true statement. And Q, Mr. P teaches art. Well, that is a false statement. So we're only going to be concerned with the case where P is true and Q is false. So right here, P is true and Q is false is this statement right here. So looking at our answer, the compound statement has to be true. Now this is a pretty simple one and you could probably see that this was true. Mr. P is a teacher and doesn't teach art. Okay, so that is a true statement, but using logic we can actually prove that it's true there. This is going to be helpful when we start getting with a lot more statements in here and they can become a little bit more confusing. All right, I want you to try number two on your own. Okay, so you're going to fill out your columns and evaluate the truth value right here. Go ahead and pause the video and then come on back to check your answer. All right, welcome back. Let's go ahead and check our answer. So you should have set up the general cases for two statements, P and Q. Then for negation P, you should get FFTT. For negation Q, you should get FTFT. And then for the OR, you should have, well, two falses make a false. Uh, false or true is true. True or false is true. And true or true is true. So the presence of true in either one of these makes a statement true. Now another thing that you can think about with an or is what makes it false. Okay, so with an or we can say that two falses make a false. Okay, so that's simple enough. So anytime you see or, two falses will make a false. Everything else will always be true. All right, let's move on to another example. In this example, when we look at this, we can say it is false that Q or not P or R. And now you can see we actually have three statements right here. So we're going to go ahead and fill in the cases for the three statements. So remember, for P, we're going to get four trues and four falses. For Q, we're going to get two trues, two falses, two trues, two falses. And then for R, we're going to alternate trues and falses. Now this one's not already set up for us in nice columns, so we're just going to rewrite this and we're going to kind of space it out. And then you can kind of see the natural columns happening here for us. I'm going to go ahead and make some lines. You can make some lines on your paper if you would like as well. If you look on the Myolu site, I've put up a nice thing called Truth Table Paper, and it's already set up for uh, cases with three statements, and all the lines are all blocked out. It's got some alternating colors, so it might be helpful to keep this organized. Now looking at this, we have to decide what we're going to do first. So if we look at this negation, that is going to be negating this entire parentheses. So we really have nothing to work with quite yet. But we can always go through and fill in all of the simple statements first. So we're just going to write what Q is right below it. So remember, Q alternates two trues, two falses. Okay. 
Here's an or. Well, we really can't do an or until we have something to compare it with. So we can fill in this not p right here because it only takes the one statement. So we have four falses because we're switching this one and then four trues. From here, we can do Q or not P. So remember, the presence of true makes it true. Or you can think if there's two falses, then it's false. So here, true. Here, true. Okay, two falses make it false. Two falses make it false. Presence of true makes it true. Presence of true makes it true. Presence of true makes it true. And the presence of true makes it true. So now looking at this, this is a live column right here. And this is the answer to the or part right here. So we've already used up the Q column and the not P column, and those are no longer in play. What we want to do now is figure out this negation. So we're negating the entire set of parentheses here. So we're going to negate this OR column. Okay. So we're going to take the negation of true, which is false. We're going to take the negation of this true, which is false. The negation of this false, which is true. The negation of this false, which is true and then the negation of true, which is false, the negation of true, which is false, the negation of true is false, and the negation of true is false. Okay, so now this negation column is still live. Okay, we used up that or column, so that's no longer there. So here's our negation. Now, next it says or r. So it's going to be the negation or r. Well, we're going to have to put r in before we can do the or. So r is just alternating trues and falses. Okay, so now we need to figure out the or column. And it's going to be tempting to just do the two that are right next to each other, but you have to go back and think which columns have we not used yet. And so we're really going to be going back to this negation right here and comparing these two columns. Okay, so we say false or true. Well, the presence of true makes it true. False or false. Two falses make an or false, true or true is true, true or false is true, false or true is true, false or false. Two falses make a false when we're dealing with or. False or true is true, and then false or false makes our false. So our final answer then is right here under the OR column. True, false, true, 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 false, true, false. All right, let's move on. Now these next questions are going to be taking a look at our compound statements and they're going to tell you what P, Q, and R are, whether they're true or false. So we have P and Q and not R. If P is false, Q is true, and R is true. So here, P is false, Q equals true, and R equals true. So false, true, true. So if we just go back to right here, where is false true true? So we're basically just going to be looking at this 
row right here to determine our answer. Okay? But obviously this statement is different than the one that we're looking at. But that's basically what we're doing is we're just looking at one row. So P and Q and not R when P is false, Q is true, R is true. All we're going to have to do is substitute the F's and the T's in for our letters. So P is false, so we're going to write false. And we're going to leave it and. Q is true. And not R. R is true. So we can substitute all those in, and now we perform our logic. So false and true. Well, and says they both have to be true to make it true. So that gives us a false. We'll bring this and straight down here. And then not true is false, because the negation switches the sign. And then false and false ends up being false. So once you complete this all the way down to one single letter, that's going to be your final answer. All right, I want you to try number seven on your own. Substitute those values in and find whether this statement is true or false. Go ahead and pause the video and then come on back when you're all done to check your work. All right, welcome back. Go ahead and see how you did, substituting in those values and then each step along the way. Not true becomes false, false or true becomes true. True and false is false. Now, I want to have you focus in on just this section right here. So in our first step, we had and false. Well, and false means that we're going to have at least one false there. And so the and statement is going to have to be false at the end. So Whenever you see and false, you could automatically go to false as your conclusion there. All right, hopefully this made a little bit of sense to you. If not, maybe go back through and, and watch the video. There's going to be some examples for you to try here at the end. So go ahead and take that practice quiz in MyLoo Studio and check and see how you're doing. Um, thanks again for watching, and I look forward to seeing you all in class. Bye-bye for now.